Alright, I've played a crap ton of Modern Warfare 2 beta over the last two weekends and honestly it kind of feels like I'm back in 2009 again. A huge part of it is actually how vile the lobbies are and simply put it's all so awful but entertaining. Anyways, welcome back to another video. So I've had the Xbox Series X for just over six months now and I really had to revisit this because the Series X is absolutely amazing. I recently did a longer term PlayStation 5 review which I'll link above and similar to that review I want to talk about some of the improvements which we've seen since launch and everything else that makes it so great. The longer you spend time with something the more you can learn which is also why the gaming experience this system puts out is incredible. And it's not just the Xbox Series X but the whole new generation of game consoles have pulled me back into the console space after spending the last decade as a PC gamer. This is isn't a comparison video or anything, but I am an Xbox fanboy just as much as I'm a PlayStation fanboy, so here's my 6 month review of the Xbox Series X. And if you're new here, thanks for stopping by, on this channel I cover gaming and tech, and if you enjoyed the video definitely leave a like and subscribe if you loved it, otherwise you'll be forced to use a bag of milk as a pillow. So one of the things I gotta start with is the build and aesthetic of the Xbox Series X, because just like the Xbox Series S, this thing looks beautiful to me. Don't get me wrong, I dig things with a gamer aesthetic, but I love simple and minimal looking tech even more, and really the Series X will go anywhere you need it to. It kinda looks more like a decor piece rather than a standout game console like my PlayStation 5, not that it's a bad thing. I also really dig the shorter stature of the Xbox Series X, mainly because it fits on my gaming bookshelf and a lot of other places. The single Xbox power button LED is super cute, and I really love the tiny bit of neon green on the top end. It does add a subtle touch of color to an otherwise simple design. I do keep mine upright on my TV stand, and you've got the tiny feet on the side if you do want to place it horizontally. Once in a while, I do like to mix it up. Now let's talk features because this has become my go-to console for a lot of things, and I want to start with a recent addition. Discord. Finally, they've added native Discord support, which is incredible, especially when playing with your friends. Previously, I'd had to set up some janky ass setup with my phone and an earbud tucked into my headset. That was absolutely awful. Now, you just gotta hop and chat on your PC or phone and just transfer it to your Xbox. While I wish you could just jump in direct through an app, I expect that to be in a future update, but this is definitely a good step forward. Another new one I literally only discovered last week when reviewing some webcams is that you can stream directly to Twitch from your Xbox. So you're telling me my tired, impatient millennial ass could have started streaming a long time ago with just my Xbox? That would have been sick. I've always thought about it, but fussing with capture cards and OBS and all that just sort of put me off. Quick resume though is hands down the best feature on the Xbox Series X. The SSD is thick with speed and truly swapping between games and simply starting up a game is just so quick. This is still a feature dearly missed whenever I am playing on my PC. And after a long day, really, it's just so nice to sit down and just game within 15 seconds. And I'm not sure if I can call it a feature, but Game Pass is still to this day the best value in gaming, I think. Don't quote me on that. But when you're talking day one releases for some games and a simply massive library, this is really hard to beat. Right now, I picked up my first Assassin's Creed game since Assassin's Creed 2, where you got to play as <clears throat> Ezio Auditore da Firenze. Yeah, you like that? And still, I'm only like 1% into the game, but so far, I'm really enjoying it. And again, Game Pass being wild, I just installed Deathloop, which is waiting for me to play still. And for once, I'm getting booted off my Xbox since my wife decided to pick up Two Point Campus, so it's definitely a double-edged sword. Do not show your wife Two Point Campus. Cloud Gaming 2 is still badass if you want to check out a game without installing it. They've got a whole section of good for cloud games and I recently tried Aragami and it worked really well. But let's talk gaming real quick since the Series X comes in as an absolute powerhouse. With the new generation of consoles of course, you've got 4K gaming, variable refresh rate, and the gaming experience is wildly good. I mentioned it in my original video, but having only ever played games at 1080p or 1440p, you sort of don't know what you're missing until you actually game at 4K with a high refresh rate. It is more expensive to get the full experience, but if you do snag an HDMI 2.1 supported display, this really makes the whole experience even better. I will say when I first got the Xbox Series X though, I was still only playing on a 4K 60Hz TV and even then that was amazing, so you definitely don't need a top end TV to have a good time. Games really do look incredible and the detail is very noticeable. As mentioned right now, I'm enjoying Assassin's Creed Origins, the Modern Warfare 2 beta and I'm still playing Forza and Halo Infinite and each of these look great. Games are absolutely top notch, check out this intense and wild gameplay.
absolutely riveting gameplay, and I'm looking forward to when the next cut actually releases, as well as diving into Deathloop. I also just picked up this Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. It's expensive as hell, but we'll see if it's worth it. I'll actually be reviewing this on the channel soon. It probably won't help me too much since I'm still trash at COD regardless. Outside of gaming though, you're all covered, which makes this the perfect all-in-one entertainment system. Watching Netflix or any other popular apps, content looks amazing. Depending on the app and the content you are watching, the Series X will support 4K HDR with Dolby Vision. I can't say I know what Dolby Vision is, but stuff still looks incredible. And while I am mostly an Apple Music user, I do have Spotify, which I really dig using on the big screen. It's a nice to have when you have company over. And the dashboard is fine, it offers a little bit of customization, but not much beyond the classic Microsoft tiles. I hear they are alpha testing a new dashboard, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Now luckily, apps don't take up a lot of storage, but the Series X does come with a 1TB SSD, which I actually haven't had any issues with yet. Personally, I haven't run into the need to delete games, even with Game Pass. My Series S, however, is a different story. I've got to juggle with that system. Performance-wise though, like I mentioned with Quick Resume, it's freaking fast. Not that you wouldn't or couldn't have a fast SSD on a gaming PC, but the load times paired with Quick Resume is wildly impressive. Loading screens are super short and I have storage to spare. If or when I do run into storage issues though, I can't always get the external proprietary SSD, but I think that's dumb as hell. I wish they just let us use an SSD like the PlayStation 5, one of the only major things I despise about the Series X. The Seagate SSD does run 180 bucks up here in Maple World, but that's about 130 bucks in the USD. I don't like that. And while I've been using this Elite controller for the last week, the original controller it comes with is actually still really good. While I personally prefer rechargeable integrated batteries, I just use these rechargeable IKEA batteries which do the trick. I've had folks mention on previous videos that they forgot the controller has a 3.5 millimeter jack for headsets, so I've got to give it a mention in this video since I use it every single day. It's a simple but super dope feature that didn't exist back when I had an Xbox 360. So how do I sum up my long-term experience with the Xbox Series X? Sounds totally bullshit, but it's almost life-changing, similar to the experience with my PlayStation 5. I can't quite put a value on it, but after a long day, I can grab a controller, melt into my couch, and be gaming within 15 seconds, literally. As a tired new dad who sits at a desk all day, for me, it's nice to get away from the desk every now and then and be a blob on the couch. As well though, if I do want to get sweaty and dunk on some kids in Call of Duty, I can just plug my Xbox into a monitor and still lose. Either way, the Xbox Series X is an absolute win of a console, and I know it's only going to get better with time. I can't wait for the next wave of dope-ass games, and there's always something for someone. And don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, till next time.